kids, your guitar sage here. Today we are going to learn a special technique that I like to call chord noodling. So some of you may know this technique already, but you probably don't know it as chord noodling. You probably just kind of noodling around on the guitar and you kind of know where to put your fingers. Uh, so some of you know how to do this, some of you don't know how to do this. So I'm going to, um, to kind of show you a little bit about this. Um, now this video is, is kind of a supplementary um, lesson, if you will, to the ebook that I sell. Um, and specifically, I have a page in there called Open uh, Scales. And on that page, basically what I have is um, for, for your basic open keys, C, G, D, E, A, I think I've gotten there. Mm -hmm. um, I've got basically all the notes mapped out on the fretboard as to what are the permissible chord, or what are the permissible notes, if you will, for playing in a specific key. So some of you know this and some of you don't, that when we're in a specific key, there are basically seven, for the most part, there's seven permissible notes that are going to sound really great with that particular key. Now you can go outside of that scale. Um, in, in, in diatonic harmony, what we call diatonic harmony, or um, Western, in Western music, which is pretty much everything at this point, classical, rock, blues, jazz, country, anything, um, we have 12 tones, so it's known as the 12 tone scale, um, or the chromatic scale, which is all the notes from A, all the way up to its octave, another A, so from A to A, or Do, 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 um, if we're using the solfege system, which is the Italian system. Um, okay, so we have our 12 notes, right? Hang on with me. Don't, don't run away. Don't get scared at some of the things I'm saying. You'll understand this, okay? Um, so we have some basic notes, um, 12 notes to be exact, but the major scale, and I've got a video for the major scale that you'll want to watch because it will help you understand this a little bit more. The major scale says whole step, whole step, half step, whole, 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 half. So if we start on the A, we have, and we move up, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That's our major scale. Right? And so if I'm playing in the key of A, I can hit any one of these notes. And it's going to sound nice over that chord or over that specific chord progression that's in the key of A. Okay? Think of the chord progression like a background of a picture. Okay? If that background is, say, um, a mountain and trees and those sorts of things, you might not have a giant dragster sitting in the middle of that picture. That would be a little bit out of place, right? So think about the background as your chords, your, your pad, or your, where you're starting from, what key you're in. And then over top of that, what's in the center of the picture would be your scale or the notes that you choose to go over that. So nothing, nothing wrong with playing something outside of the key, except it's just going to seem out of place. Um, okay, so a little tangent there, but it's a little bit easier to understand if you kind of get the picture. Uh, here's another example that I use with my students sometimes is, let's say you're talking with your friends. You have five people at a table and you're talking, and everybody's talking about cars, okay? Your friend comes up and stands there for a minute, it's listening, and all of a sudden he starts talking about computers. And everybody's a little bit uncomfortable for a second. You guys start talking about cars again. He keeps talking about computers and won't stop talking about computers. Well, think about that is in the same way as being in a specific key. If all those musicians are in a specific key and this guy comes along and starts playing in a different key, it's going to be really awkward and it's going to sound really bad. So he's going to want to play in the same key or talk about the same things you're talking about. So in that case, um, in this case, when we're, when we're playing these chords, there are certain notes that are going to complement it, and certain chords that are going to rub and not sound good. Today, we're going to talk about the notes that are going to sound good. Um, now, really, in order for this um, video to make total sense, you kind of have to have those open scales in front of you. Otherwise, you're not going to know what notes to choose from unless you memorize what I'm doing here, and you're welcome to do that as well, but it's not going to give you the full spectrum of the notes that you could choose. Okay, so, um, if you're looking at your ebook right now, um, you know, open up the page that says um, major scales, okay, and the open major scales. So, 
in the key of G, I've got all these notes that I can choose from, like for instance. I've got that. I've got all that, you know, basic area there. Alright, so basically I have this memorized. How did I memorize that? By just sitting there and toiling through it. Okay, nothing, I haven't been born with anything. Some people say, man, you're fast, you're good, whatever. It really has to do with how much time you spend on the instrument, so I appreciate the compliments. But you can be better than any guitar player out there if you, if you take the time to do it. So just memorize these scales, okay, on that page. Let's say you have a memorized, okay. Let's say, just pick one key. Let's take the key of G. This is what I call chord noodling. I'll do this in the studio a lot. If someone wants me to come up with you know, a signature lick or something that fits the song um, that they hadn't thought of, then I'll kind of bust these out. Um, let's say I've got a chord progression that's say like G, um, C, E minor, D. Okay, so I got my chord progression, maybe something like boring, right? Now what can we do to, to give it some sauce, some, give it some, some zest, you know? Well, we can modify the chords as we're going along, okay? So I'm doing this because any note that's in the key of G, because I'm this is this chord progression is in the key of G. G, C, E minor, D. It's all in the key of G. And the notes that I'm choosing from are all in the key of G. So if you bust out that G major um, open scale page there, you're going to see all these green notes on the fretboard. Those are notes that I'm choosing from. So for instance, these melodies right here, this melody, that's what I'm going to use to create this little um, chord noodle, if you will. So I could play, I'll just give you an example here. If I'm playing through this, maybe I'll just use the pick here. I'm going to play a basic G. Now I'm going to play different things to give uh, different notes from the G major scale to give it a different sound. So for instance, strumming this chord. But we can go further than that and we can do like a, maybe an arpeggio type of thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to capitalize on this melody here. And I'm going to have this thread run, that little melody run through these four or five chords, four chords. Our ear is always looking for some commonality in music. It's always looking for a pattern, okay? Um, we're attracted to patterns, and um, and that's what we're doing in music. If you just have complete randomness, you'll never like the song. Um, you're always going to be searching for a pattern. That's why pop songs are so popular. Okay, so let me take this little melody here. Maybe something like um, in a C chord. Whoops, I'm uh, sorry. And maybe an E minor. I don't have to play this because my fingers aren't playing and I'm just playing these two strings here. But I'll, I'll play it just so you're not getting confused. So, um... Now I changed the melody there at the end, but you get the idea here. I chose three notes, and I'm you know, repeating them over and over again. And then the C chord, same thing, I'm just... And then I got my E minor here that I'm going to switch to and just keep following this melody. 
Now, you don't have to do the, the, the finger picking part. You can just do a strum here. And I changed it here. You could or don't have to. Alright, um, we're going to have to split this video up because we're running out of time, kids. Um, join me in the part two of this particular video where I am doing something in the key of C. So, chord noodling part two, next video. See ya.